My name's Charlie Burton. Last time I was on the show, we were interviewing a very new trader. This time, however, I've got someone here who might have a little bit more experience. Independent day trader, Jackie Mitchell. Jackie, welcome to the show. Thank you. And um, let's get started. So tell me a little bit about your trading. Now, when did you get started in trading and why? I went to my first ever seminar in um, October 2007, which was just at sort of the beginning of the recession. Good timing. Yeah. <laughs> October 2007, wasn't that the market high? Yes. You didn't know that at the time. No, 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 I didn't know. Um, so, yeah, we'd, my sister and I had gone to the first ever seminar and um, sort of taught to um, expect that the markets would go up because at that time we were trading um, taught tr stocks. Um, of course, it did everything, but um, it was going all the wrong way, and we had no clue why or you know what was happening. Of course, at the time, so um, that's how it all began. Yeah. So talking <laughs> of you said how it all began. You said you went to a seminar. How did that all come about? Um, well, uh, I'd been sort of just driving around doing my normal job, you know, listening to the radio as you go, and I'd heard this same advert over and over and over again, and I did nothing, you know. But this one day, I don't know why, it, it, I thought. Do you know what? I'll ring it up and um, I'll, I'll try it out and see what happens, which I duly did, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, went off to the first ever little meeting, you know, and yeah. Um, went on a seminar, lots of clapping, I guess, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. There hype, was, <laughs> was there? There was a good bit of hype, The guy's yeah. now in prison, is he? <laughs> no, not, well, not he might well, be, I've no idea, but um, no. Um, it was, yeah, it was very... Um, inspiring seminar yeah, yeah. Um, and it obviously sort of we took the bait okay and, and started from there yeah and um, so what were you trading in 2007 around that time what was it you got you in what well, were you getting into right it was all stocks so they taught you that you should build a, st um, a list a watch list of different companies that you thought were going to move one way or the other I mean so Sillily, we we picked the most volatile possible stocks that we could find. Um, you know, <laughs> as beginners. Perfect beginner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we went, we sort of fumbled our way through that for a bit. Um, we did the first seminar, came out of there thinking, oh yeah, that's easy enough. Um, and then Julie went on another seminar a few months later, learnt a bit more. But this time it was it was all stocks. Um, for the beginning, but um, it became apparent that that was quite hard work, you know, watching a lot of stocks. Um, and we obviously we were clueless, yep. you know, we thought we knew, but yep. we, we didn't. Um, so we, we fumbled our way through that a bit, um, carried on, and we were only sort of really playing with it at that point because we were both running another company as well. And we just used to do a couple of hours in the afternoon. Um, but we'd got the taste for it. Um, and then we started going to a few, few more Forex shows and things like that. Um, then uh, got in with um, the trading room and um, started trading indices as opposed to individual stocks, so baskets of um, the indices. Um, that was okay. Um, but again, we were just in the afternoon um, and then and then slowly, slowly, we got introduced to Forex and um, never looked back since. So, and so, yeah. so why Forex? What was it that was the appeal of trading Forex? You've gone from stocks to indices and, yep. and, and then Forex. What has been the appeal there? Well, there's a major, the major difference here is um, there's plenty of volatility in um, Forex just yep. on its own. And then the, you, you don't need a big watch list. So you can get really good at watching just a very small amount of pairings, so, which is what I do. Um, and it's, it's much easier. So you, you get to know what kind of movement to expect, you know, what's usual, what's not usual, that kind of thing. And it's, yeah, all together a, a lot easier. So you get to know more of the, the, the patterns and the behaviors of a certain currency pairs and you say you, you focus quite a lot yeah I focus um, mostly on cable and euro um, but I do do um, two or three other other pairs if the trades set up um, if cable and euro are a little bit on the flat side then I'll dip my toe in the water with the other pairs so it's interesting here because there's a lot of traders out there who think you've got to be trading a lot of different currency pairs and there's nothing wrong with that no but as a day trader, you find that focusing, focusing in the main, probably 80% of your time just on one or two yep. currency pairs is more than enough yep. for you. Yeah. You're a very technical trader, though. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, I, 
although I'm aware of news breaks and things, um, because I'm a day trader, the fundamentals don't impact hugely on, on the smaller moves in, in the day. So um, yes, I trade technically, I use stats as a really big part of my trading. So if I know that the market is likely to head towards a certain place sometime during the course of the day, I counter that in. Um, it could be looking like it's gonna go the other way. Um, but you know, and if it's gonna go the other way, but I know the stat says it will go the opposite direction, then I'm, I'm, I won't, I'll either not trade or I'll trade for the direction of where the stats say it should go. So do you spend a lot of your time testing then in order to get these statistics? Um, I have done. I do. Um, so I'll do stints of it. So I will, if I notice something that's happening in the market, I will then go back and test it, um, see how many times it hits what, or not hits or th th that kind of thing. Um, and then I'll carry on trading. And then I might go for months with not really um, seeing anything new and everything carries on in, in an A pattern, yeah. Give us an example of, you say, these stats of market moving one way or another on a, yeah. on a day. Give us a, just a brief example of what that might involve. Well, daily pivot is a favourite. So yep. um, each pair has a pivot for the day um, and price generally heads towards that pivot. Now, quite often it hits overnight, so in which case no setup. Mm. Um, or there's other things that you know that are likely to get hit. So either what we call an S1 or an R1, or um, the, the stats are that one or the other will get hit, and you know different pairs hit at different times, and there is timings involved as well. So it depends on the time of the day, um, et cetera. And so it really gets really quite technical. <laughs> but there's a lot of people watching this show who are more f investors or longer term traders who just don't understand um, day trading itself. But what you're sh saying to us here is that it's actually really involved and there's a lot of statistics and a lot of work goes in yeah. into. You don't just sit there gambling away all day. Oh, long, gosh, no, no, I might I might not get a trade in a day. Um, yeah. If the market's pretty flat um, and there's just nothing setting up, I might not have a trade. Um, generally, I might get one or two a day. Um, so I could be sat there for hours. More often than not, I get a trade early morning um, and then I might get another one soon after that or I might get one in the afternoon. I'm not always there in the afternoon, so it's more often than not the mornings. But I find that's okay. enough. That's enough for me. So we've got um, a little bit of a picture here about your background some of the, the ways that you trade. Yeah. Um, okay, here's a question for you, curveball. Are women better traders than men? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I think um, in the main, you're either, you're either gonna do it or you're not. Um, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages um, either side of the coin, I think. You know, for women, I think, have a lot more involvement family-wise, and so there's a lot more disruptions, which men don't tend to get as much of. But equally, um, they're not prone to sort of testo testosterone-driven trades, you know, so yeah. as much. You tend to be a little bit quieter about it, yeah. Okay, brilliant. And just very quickly, three tips for anyone wanting to get into short-term trading. What would oh, you give them? Uh, be prepared for the long haul. It's not an overnight sensation. You know, there's a lot of work goes in. Yes, it's all simple, but it's lots of simple things that all add up together yep. um, that you've got to get used to trading. Um, it is a very, very bumpy ride. So you think you're going great guns sometimes, and then other times it's whipping you. Um, there's that side to it. And good education. There's loads of educators out there yeah uh, easy trader maybe I don't know yeah there's a million I won't I didn't mean to say that sorry yeah yeah there is you know there's, there's good educators and there's some very bad ones as well yeah. brilliant Jackie we're out of time already I'm gonna have to <laughs> thanks ever so much for coming on tip TV thanks for your time and sharing your thoughts there we could have gone on for 20 minutes but we're up times up already my name's Charlie Burton for tip TV and we have got the sports coming in at 1130 trade safely out there